mechanical room. So we got our commercial self-contained train unit. Um, this one's been giving us uh, some issues here, as you can see. So if we go here, we have compressor circuit two trip. Uh, apparently this has been happening quite a bit. So we got to see why this is happening. So here we go. Alrighty, so this one's got, so that's circuit one and that's circuit two. Mm, yeah, and that's circuit one and that's circuit two. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go kill the power and then test those contactors and then we'll start from there. But I know the compressors work because I was here before and they work, it just randomly trips for some reason. Alrighty, AC number two is ugh, off. Alrighty, so first things first, we wanna make sure that we have the powers actually off. This is a three phase unit, so we go we're gonna go count that one, two, and three. All right, just so you know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go one and two, nothing. I'm gonna go three and uh, two and three, nothing. I'm gonna go one and three, and we got nothing. So power is confirmed off. All righty. So this is the guy that keeps tripping. Um, I suspect because this has been an ongoing problem, so I suspect that we have an issue with this contactor, and I'll show you why. Um, so let's go ahead and get set up for this because I'm going to need to get this set up. All right, so we want to go ahead and we want to check our contacts on these guys. So it's very important with three phase units that all the contacts are good. So just bear with me here. Okay, so we got one. I'm going to push in the contactor. And, all right, so we got low resistance, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna check in number two. Okay, so it's a little bit higher, it's still tolerable. And we're gonna check number three, same deal. So, like I think is we have a high resistance, so it ends up tripping the unit on probably high amperage or high heat or something. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace this contactor and we'll see what happens. So here's our new contactor. Now you can see there's something different here. It is three poles, but on our original one here, I'm on focus. Our original one here, we have this little side piece. So we actually have this little side piece that we gotta install. Basically, this just proves that the contactor actually closed it should just clip right onto the side of the new contactor so we'll get that prepped first and then we'll go ahead and change it out but yeah you can see that's how that works right there so when the main contactor closes it actually flips this and closes these contacts and that's how it knows if uh, something's open or closed and it's very important to pay attention because in this case we have two of them one of them's normally open one of them's normally closed so we need to make sure we use the right one this one you can see here, here's the little side of it. You can see that part moves. That's where this guy is gonna clip on. So you can see here, there it is, a little white spot. So what we're gonna do is just pops in there like that, pops in like that, and then we slide it forward. Okay, just like that, clip that, clip that, and we are good. Now we can see that it is good. Maybe not. There we go. So yeah. So we want to go ahead and test it and make sure it doesn't get stuck like it just did. So yeah, I'm good to go. So I'm just making sure that it's normally open, which it is, because I have no tone. If I push it in, you can see now it's definitely got contacts. So. All right, so we got all our wires marked up, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our low voltage, which is actually a high voltage, because it's a 120 volt coil. All right, and go ahead and get all this stuff loosened up. Three-phase compressors, the phases actually matter, so you want to make sure you put 
put them back the same way it started. Um, I usually make little marks on the wire so I know which ones which. I start with, I'll do one line and then two lines and three lines and I'll start from the left and work my way to the right. And this one's got one line so that's going to go in there. And if you notice I'm not twisting these, I want to keep these flat that way the surface area for contact is as wide as possible. So. Uh, looks like I went a little too wide now, it won't fit in the hole, so I'll squish it a little bit. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and check our resistance levels on our new contactor. Uh, I'll check terminal 3. Try not to boggle my hand. You can see it's pretty much zero now. And terminal 2. Zero. Terminal 1. This guy right here. Let me switch hands. This one's kind of hard because it's hard to get a good contact on this one handed. Um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that's pretty much true. There you go. It's pretty low. So we should be good. We'll go ahead and check this other one too. Good. That one's a little high. It's not ridiculous. I might actually have to. That one's good too. So here's our old contactor. You can see it's all, it's pretty burnt up. It's weird that it's the middle one because the one on the end was the one that gave us the highest resistance. So that's strange. Anyway, that can cause this unit to trip. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this back together and see what happens next. Alrighty, so we got the power back on. We got our inrush set. Um, so what we do now is we want to test it. So first things first, service mode. Okay, uh, we want our fan at 100%. Okay, so we're gonna hit next, and then that. Uh, okay, that's fine. We want to make sure that's drive max. That's gonna open up all the VAVs. So I always turn on the blower first, that way, and let it run for a little bit. That way all the VAVs have time to open up. Uh, otherwise you're gonna have some major airflow issues. This is just if you want to turn bypass other stuff, but we're gonna leave it. This is the compressor relays. This is our circuit two, that's circuit one. We're gonna leave those off. I want to make sure the blower is running. Uh, this is the hydronic heat actuator. So this uses hydronic for heating. Um, so that will adjust the variable valve to you know let the water in. Um, and then that's our economizer. And that's the bypass relay. So yeah, we have a lot of different things we can do on here, but in our case, we're gonna keep it simple and we're just gonna turn on the fan. So once we've made all of our changes that we want, we're gonna go ahead and hit start test. And she's gonna start in three, two, one, zero. There we go. So this is our VFD. If we hit display mode, you can actually see our horsepower uh, we can see our amp draw and the percentages. Alrighty, so we're at about 100%. Alright, so she's been running for about 10 minutes. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit service mode again. And then we're gonna keep hitting next until we get to our compressor relays. All right, you have to do these one at a time. So we select our K11 and we hit up or to change it to on. Now we have to hit enter, otherwise it's not gonna do anything. So we hit enter. Okay, there's our first one. As you can see, it's closed. All right, here goes our second one. So we hit next, we've selected this one, we hit plus, on, now we hit enter, and here we go. You can see our second one close, and our start answer is 72.5, that's our in rush, our run is about 12. Alright, now to turn this off, we're going to go ahead and hit down. We have to do the last one we turn on. It won't let us do it the other way. 
we hit enter. Okay. And, whoops. Alright, previous, down, enter. Now we hit stop to stop our test. And there you go. And then when we're ready to put it back in a normal mode, you just hit auto. Um, I'm gonna go check what the uh, specs are for the uh, compressor uh, amp draws though. All right, so this is our compressor here. So our locked rotor amps is 117. So I know our start amps are pretty high, but we should be okay because that's well below that. Uh, the run loads are 14.5, so that seems to be okay. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, so we hit the auto button. Now it's in normal mode. Make sure you go into diagnosis. Go ahead and clear this out. So we go, um, let's show you again. So with status, right? It goes uh, diagnostics, right? It's in the log, so we hit next, right? And then we hit cancel, and then we go minus, plus, plus, minus enter and now it's erasing it that way we know it's not an old code when we come back to check on it see so if we go diagnost diagnostics we hit next you can see it's all blank now so don't forget to do that after you you know because yeah we might come back and, and see that and be like oh it didn't work but it turned out it was just you know it was just i didn't clear it out so don't forget to do that Hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment. Tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.